Hi everyone, my name is Vail Pagan, and I'm an undergraduate student studying computer science at the Georgia Institute of Technology. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss data poisoning attacks against federated learning systems, which is work conducted with my co-authors, Stacey Truex, Emery Gersoy, and Ling Liu. A quick outline for today's talk. I will first provide a quick introduction to federated learning, then I'll discuss data poisoning attacks, and label flipping attacks. Next, I will describe the threat model and attack evaluation metrics. And finally, I'll then evaluate the attacks and propose a defense for server-side detection. To kick things off, what is federated learning? Federated learning is distributed machine learning where training occurs at the edge, which could be in IoT, consumer cell phones, or corporate on-prem infrastructure. For instance, each participant could have their own training data stored on their cell phone. This data will never leave their device, and instead, we're going to distribute the current machine learning model to each participant, then we're going to train the machine learning model locally using the participant's data. We're then going to collect the parameters of the trained models through a central aggregator. We're going to compute a new global model which we're then going to share back with each participant for the next round of training. This process constitutes one communication round and is repeated many times to form the training process. There are many examples of federated learning in practice. Google's Gboard application uses federated learning to develop next word prediction models directly on users' cell phones. OpenMind is building one of the leading open source federated learning and secure computation systems for research. And Oaken is one of many startups that are actively pursuing federated learning technologies for use in industry, primarily in healthcare. Some quick background on deep learning. Deep learning is an iterative process in which a machine learning model extracts features from data in order to create a prediction or classification. The goal of training is to minimize a loss function. In federated learning, we use many of the same principles in standard deep learning. However, we diverge at a few points, one of which is in the distributed nature of the training process, which requires an aggregation function. The most popular, and what we integrate, is called federated averaging, which computes the mean of a set of models to generate a combined global model. Using federated averaging, our training process follows these steps. First, we select k participants, which are represented as all i. Next we distribute a starting model to each participant that was selected in step one. We then use deep learning to train the provided starting model on each participant's data locally. Upon completion of training, we collect the model gradients from each participant, and finally, average the gradients to compute the global model for that round. Together, these five steps represent a single communication round. The training process in federated learning is composed of many of these communication rounds, which occur sequentially. Like standard deep learning, federated learning has numerous attack vectors. One of these attack vectors is data poisoning attacks, and specifically what we're going to talk about today, targeted label flipping attacks. In general, label flipping attacks involve a malicious adversary that changes one data sample's label from its true class to another class. On the right side of the slide, you can see an instance of this occurring in the C for 10 dataset, where our hypothetical adversary wants to change one airplane to be a bird. Targeted label flipping attacks are an extension of these label flipping attacks and are more focused. These attacks involve collectively flipping a group of data samples from one class, which we denote the source class, to just one other class which we denote as the target class. For instance, marking all airplanes in the C for 10 dataset as birds. We denote this process as source class, followed by a rightward arrow, then target class. In our experiments, we explore a single adversary's capabilities to execute a targeted label flipping attack. The adversary's goal in such an attack is to manipulate the global model 
such that there are high errors in a specific class, the target class. In this scenario, we assume an adversarial model that considers a set of malicious participants. Each of these malicious participants can alter their own set of data, but cannot access or manipulate any other participant's data. While participants can be compromised, we assume the central aggregator is honest and is not compromised. To give a brief example of what this threat model translates to in a real world scenario, the bottom left of this slide, we have five participants, one of which is malicious. This malicious participant executes a targeted label flipping attack on his or her data, changing the class labels for all data samples in class zero to now be in class two, which would be airplanes to birds in the previously depicted data set. As we can see, conducting this attack requires very little knowledge of the training process by the adversary, which makes it very appealing over other data poisoning attacks. Not only does it not require any manipulation of the local learning process itself, the attack isn't specific to any DNN architecture, loss function, or optimization function that is used in the training process, and the adversary doesn't need to compromise the central aggregator. So there's a relatively low barrier of entry for conducting these kinds of attacks. There are numerous metrics that can be considered to evaluate the success of these attacks, but for the sake of this presentation, we will use the following two metrics. The first of which is the global model accuracy after the final communication round. This metric is measured by calculating the number of samples correctly classified divided by the total number of samples in the test set. The second metric, class recall, gives us insight into the number of correctly classified samples in each class. We calculate this as the number of samples correctly classified as a given class divided by the total number of samples in that class. We investigated five research questions in our work. We'll begin by evaluating federated learning's vulnerability to data poisoning attacks and how one such attack, label flipping attacks, impact the resulting model. We then investigate how attack timing impacts the model's vulnerability and how malicious participants can improve the effectiveness of their attack by manipulating their availability. Finally, we develop a defense to these attacks that shows promise in detecting malicious participants. In our experiments, we conducted federated learning with 50 participants and one central aggregator. The training data is distributed between the 50 participants in an independent and identically distributed format. The test data is held by the central aggregator. The central aggregator uses federated averaging to aggregate the models that participants train locally using cross entropy as the loss function and stochastic gradient descent as the optimizer. We use the C410 and Fashion MNIST datasets in our experiments, both of which are standard datasets in the computer vision and machine learning communities. C410 contains 60,000 32 by 32 pixel color images that are divided into 10 classes. Fashion MNIST also contains 60,000 images, which are 28 by 28 pixel and grayscale. These pictures are divided into 10 classes as well. 50,000 of the data samples are distributed between the participants as training data, and 10,000 test samples are held by the central aggregator. All experiments conducted with C410 use the same neural network, which is in the top right of the slide. And similarly, all experiments conducted with Fashion MNIST use the neural network at the bottom right of the slide. While we have data from experiments with both datasets, I will be using graphs for C410 in the rest of this presentation because we do not have enough time to discuss both. The first question we investigated was determining whether federated learning is vulnerable to poisoning attacks, and if so, to what extent. In our experiments with both C410 and Fashion MNIST, we observed that poisoning attacks can be detrimental to the final model's accuracy. When only 1 out of 50 participants are malicious, there is negligible impact on the final model. But, as the proportion of malicious participants increases, shown on the x-axis of these graphs, the impact of the attack becomes apparent. When 30% of the population is malicious, we observed a 50% drop in source class recall. Experiments with Fashion MNIST showed a similar trend with increasing malicious participant proportion 
leading to decreased final model accuracy. So the answer to our research question is yes, federated learning is vulnerable to data poisoning attacks. Now that I've established that federated learning is vulnerable, our next question investigates how attackers can implement an attack. Specifically, can they craft a targeted attack where the impact of the attack is limited to just the source and target classes? In our experiments with both C410 and FashionMnist, once again, the change in source class recall was negative, as shown in column two, and the change in target class recall was positive, as shown in column three. By summing the change in recall of all other classes, I can obtain the change in final model accuracy not attributable to the source or target classes. As shown in column four, the impact is negligible, with a one to three scenario in experiments with fashion MNIST leading to an approximately 0% change in final model accuracy. Targeted label flipping attacks against a specific source and target class are therefore limited in scope and do not significantly impact the other classes. So we've demonstrated that federated learning is vulnerable to poisoning attacks, and we've shown that these attacks can be targeted. However, the data previously presented studies attacks that were conducted throughout the whole training process. While a malicious adversary can successfully execute an attack this way, it requires significant resources and presents a larger window of opportunity for detection. Instead, attackers may want to minimize the number of communication rounds that they participate in to reduce the chance of detection and minimize the amount of resources required. We explored two scenarios, one where we allowed malicious participants up until the 75th communication round, and one where we allowed malicious participants from the 75th communication round through the rest of the training process. When we removed malicious participants starting at communication round 75, the final model accuracy ended close to the accuracy we achieved in a control experiment without any poisoning. Further, recovery is quick. In just a couple of communication rounds, the model recovers and achieves similar accuracies as the control. By contrast, Malicious participants in communication rounds 75 and later still have significant impact on source class recall and therefore present a better approach for malicious adversaries to avoid detection. However, we want to point out that recovery is quick here as well. As such, it's critical for the adversary to participate in the last communication round if possible. This will result in the greatest decrease in source class recall while minimizing the chance of detection. We also conducted experiments where we isolated malicious participant availability, which we denote as alpha, and therefore the likeliness to be selected relative to honest participants. When selecting each participant in a communication round, if alpha equals 0.6, there's a 60% chance that the selected participant will be malicious. Once we reach a critical threshold of malicious participants, 4% in our experiments, as alpha increases, the source class recall in the final model decreases. We also observed that round by round vulnerability is correlated with the change in number of malicious participants selected. When comparing source class recall between two consecutive communication rounds where there are more malicious participants in the second round compared to the first, we see an immediate decrease in source class recall. Likewise, when there are fewer malicious participants, we see an immediate increase in source class recall. This supports the claim that timing is critical for an adversary to effectively execute an attack. Because these data poisoning attacks can significantly impact the final model, it's critical that federated learning implementations include mechanisms for detection and mitigation. We propose one mechanism for detection which federated learning practitioners can integrate to identify malicious participants. The key insight in our defense is comparing model gradients from participants. We first capture a list of gradients, with the parameters from the final layer of the model before the output layer. We're specifically looking at the parameters associated with the output node linked to the source class. These parameters are captured over the set of communication rounds that might be vulnerable to attack. 
After capturing this list of gradients, we standardize it such that we remove the mean and scale to unit variance. Next, we apply principal component analysis to reduce the dimensionality of the data down to two dimensions. And finally, we plot the resulting data. These are the plots that we obtained from the algorithm from the previous slide. In these plots, each blue X represents a single model gradient from a malicious participant, and each orange dot represents a non-malicious participant's model gradient. We are analyzing the gradients from communication rounds 10 and on. We can see from these plots that there is a clear distinction between malicious and non-malicious participants. We observe two very separable clusters, one for the malicious participants and one for the non-malicious participants. In a production federated learning system, this defense can be applied autonomously through clustering. In particular, if we see scenarios with more than one cluster, we suspect there is some malicious activity present. So through our exploration of the five research questions, we can conclude that federated learning is vulnerable to data poisoning attacks. Targeted label flipping attacks, which are particularly attractive for adversaries, can significantly impact source class recall and the global model accuracy as a result. By taking advantage of their availability and understanding the training process, adversaries can improve the effectiveness of their attack. We demonstrated a proof of concept system that can detect and identify these malicious participants. And using this system, federated learning implementations can stop attacks before they compromise the integrity of the training process. We've open sourced the systems we use to conduct experiments on GitHub the link to the repository is included on this slide. Thank you.